Hello everyone and welcome back to our Art Asset Pipeline tutorial series. Today we're going to talk about creating physical collision proxies for your assets in Autodesk Maya as well as getting them into the engine using the Cry Maya tools or using the FBX pipeline based on your personal preference. Physical collision proxies are simple geometrical elements or shapes which are linked to an asset and will tell the physics system which parts of that asset should collide with the physics proxy of another asset. Due to the fact that checking for collisions is really expensive when it comes to performance, the proxies are used so that we don't need to take the entire geometry of an asset into account when calculating collision parameters. A simpler version of the asset or a geometrical outline around the asset will be enough to result in realistic collisions. The detail conveyed in the physical proxy of an asset should depend on the use cases of that asset. If your game revolves around lots of physical interactivity, then the proxies of your dynamic object should convey enough detail in order to make the collisions as accurate as possible. However, if an asset is only supposed to block the player's path or should only exist in the game world as a slight detail which doesn't need to be very physically accurate, then the physics proxy can be a very simple shape that just resembles the very low quality version of your asset's geometry. So let's get into it. For the first part of this tutorial, I'm going to cover the collision proxy generation procedure using the Cry Maya tools, which is part of the Cry tools package. If you haven't installed the Cry tools plugin for the supported version of Maya you're working with, I'll go over the installation process really quick. The CryEngine tool should normally be installed as soon as you install the dependencies of a new engine version, so if you already see this Crytek tab here at the top, that means you won't need to do these steps. If the tab isn't there, just run your CryEngine launcher and go to the My Engines page. Click the three dots next to the engine version you are using and click on the Reveal in Explorer option. Then just navigate to the Tools folder, scroll down and double click on the Cry Tools installer, which will automatically install all the plugins for all the detected software for you. From there, just choose Install and then click Next twice, and then you should be good to go. You should close Maya first though, otherwise you may have problems writing the plugin files. Once you have your Autodesk Maya all fired up, you can just go ahead and open the asset you want to create a physical proxy for. In this case, I have this very simple bed frame I'm going to be working with today. After having finished the modeling and texturing of the asset, the first thing I'm going to work on is the geometry of the proxy, which in this case I'm going to model by hand using simple primitive cubes, which I'm then going to merge into one single asset. In order to keep this tutorial short, I'm going to skip the modeling process, so if you need help creating simple geometry inside Maya, you can consult a basic Maya modeling tutorial. Fast forward a couple of minutes, now I have finished modeling the geometry I'm going to use as the proxy. As I said, this is nothing but simple cube primitives which I have then merged together into one object so I can have only one object in the hierarchy here. You can have multiple, separate proxies on the same asset if, say, you have an object which has moving parts, but in this case we only need one proxy element. Next, what I'm going to do is renaming the proxy geometry with the right naming scheme. In Maya's case, the name of the proxy should be proxy underscore followed by the name of your original asset, in this case bed underscore A. You should also keep in mind that your original mesh should have an underscore mesh at the end so that the exporter knows what the LOD0 version of your mesh is. It is very important that you name your geometry correctly, preferable in all lowercase letters. Now that we have that sorted out, we need to create the cry export node within Maya. I'm going to select both my mesh and my proxy by holding down control and I'll click on this Tools button in the Crytek tab. That opens the Cry Tools window. In here, we're going to click on Create Cry Export Node, which will create the export node that contains all the information needed to export the asset properly. In here, we're going to name our asset the same way we want it to show up in the asset browser in CryEngine. I'm going to call it bed underscore A, and I'll make sure that the file type is set to Geometry or CGF, and then I'll slap that Create button. Now if you look into the outliner, you can see that a cry export node underscore asset name has been created and if we expand that we can see that we have a group containing the two assets I selected earlier. Pretty simple stuff. I can easily hold down the middle mouse button to move the objects in and out of the group, but you want to have all the parts that belong to this mesh to be in this group. Next step would be the shader and the material setup, so I'm going to open Hypershade and I'll take a moment to explain what we want to achieve. So in CryEngine, a shape, or a mesh, is defined as a proxy using the properties of the material or shader we assign to the proxy, no matter what 3D modeling software we use. Maya is no different. In order to mark a certain geometry element as a proxy, we need to define that within its material. With that in mind, what we need to do is to have at least two separate materials. One will be assigned to the object we want to see in-game, and the other one will be assigned to the proxy, which will be invisible to the player. 
In Maya, the shader we use for the materials we create should always be the Fong shader, because it resembles the shaders within CryEngine most closely. If you look into my Hyper Shade, you can see that I already have a mesh material which I'm going to be using for the bed frame. Now I need to create a new one, which I will then use for the proxy. So I'm going to right-click on this panel, and I'll go over to Create, Materials, and then Fong. And now I'll rename this material to proxy underscore mat. In order to know that this material is the proxy, I'm going to change its color to red, and I'll also give it around 50% transparency. And now I'm going to apply it to the proxy geometry by selecting it in the outliner and assigning the material to the selection. Now what we need to do is to physicalize the material and to mark it as a proxy, making sure it won't render. To do that, we're going to scroll down in the properties of our proxy material and we'll expand the extra attributes dropdown. Now here's the thing, if the extra attributes dropdown menu is empty, that is because the Maya exporter did not inject the proper setting structure into our material yet. So to do that, we're going to select both of the materials in the outliner, and then we're going to click on this export button here, which is part of the cry tools. And now we're simply going to click on the add attributes button. Now we're going to have the extra attributes added to our material. All we need to do now is to set the physicalize option to proxy no draw. To export the asset successfully from Maya into CryEngine, we need to set up a shading group. A shading group contains all the materials assigned to the geometry and numbers them. If you've seen the last episode in the series, this concept is very similar to how material IDs work in 3ds Max. In CryEngine, we will see the shading group as our material and all the materials grouped under it as submaterials, which also need to have our proxy material included. To start off, we have to select our main geometry as well as our proxy geometry. With our geometry selected, we click on the Crytek tab and click on the mat.ed button. That opens the material groups window. In here, we're going to click on create group and we will name our material group the same as our cry export node. So in this case, bed underscore A. To load in all the shaders that are currently assigned to our geometry, we need to look over to the right column, which is reserved for individual shaders. And we will click on the add shader from selected geometry. As you can see, this will add the materials that are assigned to our geometry and will number it with a certain material ID. To change the number of the material in this hierarchy, you can click on the move shaders up or down buttons. But this is now good as it is. Just keep in mind that the order of the shaders here will also represent the order of the submaterials in CryEngine as soon as we generate a material. So now that we're done, you can see the shading group here in the outliner containing the two materials we need for this geometry. Let's now export everything into CryEngine. Just like the CryMax exporter, the Maya exporter will usually prefer exporting the file in the same location where the original Maya file has been saved. So in order to be able to make changes to the original file in the future, as well as making the exporting process easier, I'm going to go ahead and save this Maya file in the destination where I want the object to be exported. In this case, it's going to be the objects folder of my project. So now that's done, I'm going to click on this export button right at the top. And I'll proceed to click on the generate material files first, which will generate my material and the cry asset files. Then, as you can see, my cry export node has already been automatically added to the list, so I'm simply going to click on export selected, which will export the CGF file to the same destination as my Maya project file. And that's it. Now we can just drag our textures in, cross our fingers at the resource compiler, open the material we generated, assign the texture maps to it, place the asset in the scene, convert it to an entity, get really creative, run a physical simulation, and done. We have collisions. And that's pretty much it for the CryTools pipeline. Let's now have a look at the FBX pipeline as well. For the FBX pipeline, the rule is pretty simple. No matter what modeling software you are using, the only requirement for being able to mark the proxy geometry as an actual collision proxy in the material is to simply use two separate materials, one for the original mesh and one for the proxy. The only other requirement, which is not related to the material setup in this case, is since we're not using any quote-unquote cry exporter node, the proxy geometry now needs to be parented to the original mesh. So again, I have gone back in time to the point where I've only finished the geometry of the proxy and I haven't done anything else apart from that. Now I'm going to use the middle mouse button to drag the proxy over to our original mesh, which will make it a child mesh of our bed frame. For the material setup, I'm simply going to open Hypershade and I'll create two Fong materials. As I said before, remember to always use the Fong shader for everything you want to import into CryEngine. Now I'm going to rename both of these materials accordingly. The first one will be the name of my bed frames material, which can have any name you want. I'll just name it bed underscore frame underscore mat. 
and I'll rename the other material as well. And this one will be my proxy underscore mat. Now I'll select both the bed frame and the proxy and I'll assign the two materials accordingly. And that's it. Now we can just go over to file, export all, and you just have to make sure that you have the FBX option selected. And that's pretty much it. You can save your FBX mesh wherever you want. Now we're actually going to have to run CryEngine. So into CryEngine, I'm going to open the FBX mesh importer and I'll drag the FBX file I just exported into the viewport. And now we're going to click on the physicalization tab and we'll set the proxy underscore mat materials physicalization to proxy only, no draw, just like we did in the CryMaya pipeline. We're also going to set the proxy element on the left hand side of the window to act as a physics proxy. And now you can generate the material in the location you want and then you can save the model in its final location. And that's it. Now you know how the CryTools pipeline and the FBX pipeline work when creating physical proxies in Maya. The workflow you choose is only up to you. If you have any further questions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below or head over to our Discord channel where you can get in contact with us and other CryEngine developers and where you can learn more about being a CryEngine developer yourself. I'll see you there.